Hello everyone, welcome back to another story. Well, last time we left off, I was just wrapping up my uh, senior year at high school, and as the year came to a close, all my all my peers were thinking about future careers and college and what to do with their life. And I, I was feeling the pressure from, from all around me, from uh, my guidance counselors and teachers, my parents, church, everywhere. I was supposed to grow up and change, and all these things that I'd gotten really interested in like rock climbing and outdoor adventure they seemed to, to need to take a back burner because that wasn't that wasn't real life and I wasn't allowed to think that way anymore so I uh, I ended up succumbing to the uh, pressures of society and signed for signed up for college thankfully uh, my dad had a connection for me where I could go to a select number of colleges for free uh, one which included Northwestern College down in uh, Minneapolis St. Paul area So towards the uh, end of August I, I signed up for the soccer team down there and headed down there to, to start a new life As soon as I arrived down there it was immediately apparent that I must have picked the the most conservative Christian college in the country or one of them I mean the the rules that these guys had were were more stifling than anything I could have imagined. Uh, very strict curfew rules, which was understandable, uh, but very strict vi visitation rules. Uh, segregated boys and girls dorms, obviously. Uh, when you did visit, there was strict open door policies so that they could make sure they could inspect your dorm. Um, no TVs were allowed, so I of course had a TV and I, I brought it and it was quickly found and confiscated. Uh, let's see, there, there was even like a no dancing rule. I remember this one kid getting a, a citation for dancing in his dorm room. Apparently that was a big deal. I think they've since done away with this rule. So needless to say, it didn't take long before I found myself rebelling against a lot of these rules. Uh, of course, my, my TV, I was able to get it back with the recruit of a friend. We were able to, to break into my RA's dorm room and, and get it back. But uh, I, I often found myself out past curfew, and I, I sort of figured out the workaround for, for this rule. Either A, I could stay out past 5 a.m., uh, because they would close the doors between midnight, midnight and 5, so it just meant that I had to stay out all night partying with my friends, or I'd go to Perkins with uh, my friend Nicole and all of her friends. Uh, or I would sneak in through uh, one, of the, one of the doors or a window, of course uh, facing a hefty violation, but thankfully I never got caught. Of course, also brought my climbing gear down there. I, I was still trying to be myself. Uh, I was really hyper when I got down there. I, I wound up um, trying to devise all sorts of little party tricks. We'd uh, like climb buildings like I'd done in Duluth. We'd sneak into closed campus facilities. Uh, I rappelled off a bridge once. Uh, I was also just really kind of antsy and, and wanted to stay up all the time. Uh, I, I ended up devising this really strange experiment on myself where I, I tried to see how long I could stay up with no sleep. Uh, I guess this is basically out of pure boredom and I did it on multiple occasions but I, I happened to be taking a psychology class at the time and I had heard that you can hallucinate and have other strange things happen to you if you if you stay up for way too long and sure enough after about uh, two or three days I did start to hallucinate kind of like little blurbs of color and flashes of light out of the out of the corners of my eye for the most part but I did experience this weird phenomenon called micro sleeps which is where your your body is still awake and my eyes are still open but my brain falls asleep and what this means is I could be talking to someone like in the uh, in the student lounge and then all of a sudden my, my brain would flip into a dream and I would think that I'm somewhere else I'm talking to someone else uh, one time in the computer lab I I all of a sudden flipped into a micro sleep and thought that my uh, my pop can was my phone and I was in my dorm room and I picked up my pop can and started talking to it thinking I was talking on the phone. After a few seconds I flipped out of it and I was kind of embarrassed and I looked around but apparently I had only been mumbling and no one seemed to notice. Despite the fact that I only lasted at Northwestern uh, for a couple of quarters I still had some fond memories. I mean I had a good time hanging out with my friends and and staying out all night discussing theoretical physics at Perkins or pretending to study but but having very interesting conversations I think the conversations you have in your in your late teens early 20s are really interesting and uh, formative years uh, of 
of conversation. So, and a lot of these were had uh, pulling these all-nighters at Perkins. This is also when I decided to, to get into uh, jazz piano. I'd grown up hearing piano. My mom was a, a piano teacher, but I'd really never gotten into it. I didn't have the patience to, to learn how to read music very well, and I was really slow at it, but uh, I found myself really missing, uh, missing the music, so I started going into the music labs and just kind of trying to figure it out. And I still don't really know how to read music very well, but I, I've, I've learned how to do some basic chord structures and some basic things with it where it's enjoyable to me. Like I said, I, I did bring my climbing gear down there and I, I tried to find some places to climb. There, there wasn't much to do for climbing or, or any outdoor adventure as far, as far as I could tell. Uh, I did go uh, snowboarding for the very first time though at uh, Trollhagen. It was this tiny little hill in the Minneapolis area. Or, actually, I think it was over the border in Wisconsin. But um, tried climbing at Taylor's Falls. Uh, the scale was really small and it was really overcrowded and slippery and I just I didn't end up liking it that much. I think it was becoming very obvious to me that central Minnesota wasn't exactly uh, spreading my wings and, and getting out there in the world and I needed to uh, look just a little further afield. So I started trying to figure out what I might do. I, I knew that I wanted to travel and get out of the country and again I still wasn't allowing myself to to think that I could just go and be a climber or something like that the, the thought of, of such a thing had never really occurred to me uh, of going to be a climbing bum of course that would come later but I still had these pressures of like my parents and my religion the church and all that stuff telling me that like I needed to do something that was responsible and like my parents were really big into volunteering and so what was modeled to me was that you go and, and, and volunteer and you know regardless of whether it's something that you may or may not be into uh, that's that's what you're supposed to do so uh, I uh, look, researched a few different volunteering opportunities and found one in Honduras this is through a, a connection of my dad's and uh, found this guy down in Honduras that was uh, he was a missionary and he had he had a uh, recently acquired a, a, a construction project because of Hurricane Mitch. So Tegucigalpa and much of the Caribbean in, in 99 had endured uh, major hurricane devastation and so he was he was trying to get get things going as far as building homes and was wanting some help. So I reached out to him on email and <laughs> the level of desperation that I had uh, to just get out of Minnesota, get out of the country was that he didn't even right back to me before I had already bought my ticket for Tegucigalpa and already planned on heading down there and I don't know that I even cared if uh, he had a place for me to live or what I was even going to be doing and I don't think that he even knew what I was going to be doing down there but uh, you know before I knew it I had a I had a ticket to, to head down to Tegucigalpa and, and get out of Minnesota so uh, on the next video I'll talk about my uh, my three-month trip in Honduras. Thanks for joining me.